Mission in motion. Hottest mastermind group online. Watch live 360 marketing makeovers. The Connect 360 show. Make sure you share this video now. Share the live video now. Share the video now and enter your trends to win with the business radical. The Connect 360 show. The Connect 360, where we show you how to grow your life and grow yourself real quickly. Yes, this is the spot where we tune you in and where you can grow your relationships, grow your game, and grow your business all at the same time. We bring professional authors, business owners, uh, comedians, entertainers, just about anybody who's hustling and producing results. And we're going to show you how to create the solutions so that you can be able to apply it to your life and have fun at the same time. So you're in the right place. So just get tuned in or get left behind. Mission in motion with the business radical. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. You are in the right place to be. You made a great decision being here. Yes, it's the Connect 360 where we get all of the radical business advice. And yes, you know who I am. I am D. Jackson. All about making things happen. Addicted to the action. And I am here with some special guests. But first, let's introduce our, 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 our also another host, Jay. We got Jay. And uh, what's going on, Jay? What's going on? What's going on? How everybody out there doing? Make sure you like the Fresh Air Network page. Yeah. Also check it out on uh, uh, YouTube. You know, if you don't see the whole video in its entirety, uh, um, subscribe to the Fresh Air Network on YouTube. That's Air with an E. Um, I'm JC Justice. You know, right here we have a um, uh, we got Action Jackson. You know, we got Miss Tame right here. You know, our special <coughs> guest for this evening. Lana so stay Glover. tuned, Lana Glover. Lana Glover. How's everybody doing? All right. Yeah, she is our radical business winner. Yes, we are going to be doing a complete <laughs> marketing makeover today. And y'all know we got behind the ones, twos, threes, and the fours. You know, we got Kavan with Fresh Air Network making sure everything looks nice and crisp. Making sure my hat is nice and shiny. If y'all want one of them nice shiny hats, you know y'all can uh, visit the International Power Brokers. Also, so now, right now, uh, we want to do a roll call. Anybody that's watching the show right now, if you are on Facebook right now, make sure you go to the Fresh Air Network again. Reminder, so put all of your comments. The number to call in is 773-263-2584. 773-263-2584. And share it right now. You know, right. share it on in all your groups, all your pages. Share it, you know, because we're going to be giving some um, good business advice on this show right here. Yes, yes. And also, just so we know, if you're in the building right now and you're watching, we want to know. Look, we're gonna we're gonna we doing be doing a contest. We want to connect some people with some people that's looking for them right now. I don't know if you know, but there's. I went to church one day and and the pastor said something that was interesting. He said, you know what? He said, there's somebody somewhere that is here to help you live your dreams. Somebody somewhere that's here to help you live your dreams. And guess what? I think he was right about that. And because what we want to do is we want to know who you are and what you do so we can connect you with who that somebody is to help you live your dreams. So right now, put in the comment section, whatever it is you do, if you're a graphic designer, post that. If you're a videographer, let's post that. Let's network. Let's put, it, network. put it in the comments. What do you do? Because we got someone. Uh, we, we might have you on the show to push your product or your service soon. 
Yes, yes. And in fact, we're looking for our next guest so we can do a market and makeover. So whoever shares this video the most, whoever gets the most shares, is going to be entered into the raffle to be a, one of our next potential guests. Yes, yes. And then you too could uh, also maybe you might even be able to uh, take advantage of some of these Valentine's Day uh, packages we got going on. Another event I want to mention too, before we get into the topic, we got an event coming up on February 18th. February 18th at the Harold Washington Cultural Center. The film is called Gentrified. Um, it's at 7 o'clock at the Harold Washington Cultural Center. If you saw the film, 7 a.m., that dealt with uh, African American wealth and um, uh, economics. You will love Gentrified. I mean, the title speaks for itself. Check out the trailer on YouTube. Um, gentrified um, at the Harold Washington Cultural Center on 47th and King Drive. You can get tickets on the website Gentrified or CultureConnection360.com. So check it out. So, well, so, so our topic today, before we're not going to get straight into it, but I want y'all to know what it is that we're going to discuss because we're going to go through some things. I want to just let y'all know what the agenda is for today. So the main topic we're going to cover is going to be... What is the topic? I can't. What is the exact topic? Right. topic okay, on. I got it. Really I know what it is. I just didn't know the exact that's words. That's so, cool. and the exact words are the truth about side hustles. The truth about side hustles. All right. A lot of people out here. We got Trump in office. A lot of people want to, you know, do some extra work, build a business on the side, part time income. You're gonna need to when Trump get done with you. So. Hey, and you know what? We want to reveal the truth about it because a lot of people they don't know how to make that transition, right? Go from nine to five, and you know, want that people want to be able to work those extra that six to six, six to, to seven, six to five, or whatever. Well, why why is that be. good to do in work. in this millennium right now, or in this time? Why is that good to have a understanding of why? And of course, we know Trump is in office, but even before then, and probably more so now, why is it good for a person to actually have that on their mind, and then the actions behind it? Like, you know, we tell people to have businesses all the time. We've been telling people before Trump. Yeah. But what makes it so important now? Well, I'll, I'll say one thing off top, and this is something that most people don't think of when they think of business. And I'm going to say it's happiness. And I, I really feel like most people, they, when they work jobs, a lot of times they're doing it just to pay bills. And it's not really what they, their passion is. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times that side hustle is usually people putting in that extra work doing what they love. Like if you're an artist... And you might just have a passion for doing whatever that thing is, that hobby. And, and, and one, you want to have a, a life of just happiness, right? And a life of fulfillment and harmony. So that's one of the main things mm -hmm. is you want to pursue that so that you can have a, ha a happy life. That's one. Okay. Um, the reason why I ask that is because most of the time people ask or yeah. say, you know, and we're talking about it even on this show about why. And then we kind of put the cherry on top with mm -hmm. Trump being in office. Yeah. But I think that. Trump being in office, if you ain't started a business all this time, then sh kind of shame on you. Mm -hmm. If he's the, but at the same time, if he's the person who got you over the hump to start a business, then I, you know, I, I applaud that process. But I, you mentioned it, uh, Dwayne. It's the, it's the lifestyle that comes with it. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that you should be learning it now, at the age that you are now, because I've been doing lifestyle consulting for 16 years, and I have had clients that have been at the federal and state level when it comes to their employee employment for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then they're coming to me asking me to help them. But that time that they have not actually, you know, worked the muscle of being an entrepreneur, going through the experiences, yeah. having the pitfalls and the challenges. So then they have a better idea. So if they decide to retire, at least they have some of the background, some of the experiences that they have had. Why sometimes it is why you have a nine to five. Either way, you got the know-how, you got the experience. Mm -hmm. And then even besides that piece, if you don't know it, how can you teach it? So it's the legacy building process. It's the kids, it's the children, it's the people that surround you. If you don't embed that, that systematic way of being in today's time, then as you know, we're not going to have jobs like it was in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. So why are you telling these people to have businesses right and what are the, some of the takeaways and then what are the sign of the times i guess i'm saying and you know i think that that now that's a, a really great point in terms of like the you know we definitely want to be breeding leaders and be breeding you know coming to a legacy where mm -hmm. you have 
business owners, right? We want to almost be born into real estate and trust funds that and things culture. like that. You know, that's that is definitely a culture. Mm-hmm. I, and I I will also say that to a certain extent, what I what I've been noticing when it comes to entrepreneurship, I've been really studying it for the past few years and it's almost to a certain extent become a fad as well like a trendy thing to do and i think there's some some negatives that come with that and i want to talk about that that's why we the truth about the side hustles Mm -hmm. because i truly believe that some people do it just because some like it's the thing to it's cool to say i'm an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. but it's funny because it's like if you were let's say if if you were like a, a a basketball player right People say if you if, if you're an adult and someone says are you and then you say I'm a basketball player, they say oh are you a professional right because there's a difference between mm-hmm. professional and non-professional. But when people say I'm an entrepreneur, most people don't think are you a professional like are you actually getting paid as an entrepreneur mm-hmm. right? Good you job. know because there's a lot of people that are entrepreneurs and they're doing it for the wrong reasons. And, 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 I, and I believe sometimes they're doing it just because they hate their jobs and they got the wrong idea, meaning they think some people really think I know that if I do it, if I, I want to quit my job so that I can have a business and I can be able to sit around the house all day and don't do nothing. Mm-hmm. And they're thinking about the end goal of what you could get. But r- the real the reality is most entrepreneurs. You're not might even start making any money until at least a year after you didn't quit your job. So you need to at least have some type of financial stability for at least a year. And that that comes with the thought process of and and as you were speaking, I was thinking about the di- distinction between self-employed and a person that's an entrepreneur. There's a distinction between the two, just like it's a distinction between a Ma and Paul and a Walmart. Yeah, they still have the same concept. But one has a, a different degree and different thought process and how they're going to, you know, move their services and goods. Right. Mm-hmm. So I believe that uh, being self-employed means that you are, they say MLMs, multi-level marketing, you know, you are entering to somebody else's dreams or yeah. aspirations and taking on that, which is fine. I'm not tripping on that. But entrepreneurship is a lifestyle. It's a thought process. It's a daily acting and being thing to it. And if you don't necessarily have that, other people are going to see that distinction. And, and you know what? And, and I, I want to say this, too, and then I'll let the panel because I don't want to hog up the time. But I will say this. For the purpose of today's shows and the viewers, I do want to say when, when, for the topic of side hustle is not only for entrepreneurs. Because you can literally just maybe you might just want to do it as a hobby, you know, and you want to be able to make some extra money. Or let's say like my son who just turned 16 and he wants to start selling gym shoes online, Mm -hmm. you know, to do it on the side while he's in school. Who knows if he's going to be a full-fledged entrepreneur one day, but I do want to... Pause. Why do you think that your son has the notion... Because I told him to. (laughs) Continue then. Continue. That's the point. That's the point. He's around that. And his lifestyle, yeah. which ultimately he'll have the option to choose it or not. But at least he has the option. Right. Continue. Which, which is a blessing. That's one of the blessings we have to be in America because with everything that's going on political, because we're going. that's one of the questions is how politics affects uh, business and art. I will say I just went to Jamaica last week. And it was just interesting to see the level of uh the economy mm-hmm. and the struggle out there was real you know to a certain extent but what i loved about it is i didn't see not one jamaican that was begging for anything it, they probably out there but i didn't see one and I, I i was moving around but my whole point is uh that's it's a benefit that that's one benefit that we do have being in america because some other countries they 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 struggle to be entrepreneurs meaning they don't even have the opportunity to do it it's illegal if if they if you know what I mean only the government can control and regulate all the businesses so mm-hmm. you know but um, what 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 the panel what y'all think mm, I definitely think that entrepreneurship has to be a lifestyle in order to make it successful in order to become successful I think you have to eat sleep um, breathe you know what it is that you do what it is that you you know your craft is so you what's wake your up business Miss Glover what, what's what's the name of your business again for the, the name of my business. My name is Lana Glover. I'm the CEO and founder of Tame Beauty, and um, 
it's a company where <laughs> you have your, your products. Let's see some of your products. So, <clears throat> some of my products I have today. And, and also, also as she's pulling out her products, I just want to remind everybody. <laughs> Remind everybody that call in number again is 773-263-2584. Call in so we can answer any questions y'all have. 773-263-2584. So go ahead, explain why you why you're doing this. So within my company, um, Tame. So within my company, Tame. And, I mean, and what it stands for? Excuse me. It stands for take a moment to escape. That's dope because you gotta you gotta you gotta take say a moment to time. escape because it's on Tame. the screen. Mm. Okay. But I want you to actually oh, okay. Okay. say yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. It means like take a moment to escape and treat yourself to something nice. You know, take care of yourself, pamper yourself, you know, be it woman or man. Mm -hmm. My products are unisex. You know, they're crossover products for everybody. It could be for the whole household from, you know, mom and dad down to the children. You know, I have body sprays, um, body scrubs, um, candles, two-in-one candles that become um, massage oils when you burn them. All right. And body butters, which are moisturizing for the skin. So yes, my my um, product. Yeah, tell are, us more. So you can burn it. <laughs> so you can burn the candle and then like just drip it on the um, yeah, all right into the body. massage or well, pour. Not exactly drip or pour. it. Whatever you're involved you, in. You know, you can dip into uh, the candle with like a you know wooden spatula uh -huh. and you know just massage it onto the skin. Okay. okay. So yeah. Take a moment to escape. Yes. Tame. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And the website is what? The website is tamebeauty.net. Great. 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 So now that you've done that, you can leave those products out there. Actually, perhaps you can maybe put them in front there and, okay. a little bit, and now you can And, and also really quick, before we get super deep into it, I want to make sure we get some of the other things knocked out on the agenda because I know we're about to get really deep into uh, her business. Can we go really quick to the news clip for the day? Mm -hmm. So you want to set it up? Yep. All right, so we'll set, uh, we'll set up this news. Uh, one thing that we want to listen, we've been listening to our listeners, and we've been taking y'all feedback. One piece of feedback that y'all got is y'all want to get more news, and y'all want us to really produce it better, so that's what we did. Right now, we got Nicole King. She's doing news with Nikki, and uh, what we want to do is every week, we want to get opportunity for our listeners to participate in that segment, and so if you want to participate and do the news like Nikki did, or Nikki's about to do, you can have the opportunity to hit us up, inbox us, Fresh Air Network, or hit me on Facebook. Well, thank you, Jackson. Today in the Wall Street Journal, President Trump issued an executive order on Friday. And the executive order states that it prohibits people from seven countries, Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen, from entering the U.S. for 90 days. And pauses the admission into the U.S. for people granted refugee status for 120 days. That means that those people will not be able to enter the country, even if they are residents here in the United States, they have to have. Today in entertainment news, world star hip hop founder, Leo Dent, many of you may know as Q, passed away allegedly of a heart attack on Monday in a massage parlor in San Diego. CPR was performed on him at about 5.30 in the evening where ambulance and paramedics pronounced him dead on the site. Sports. Today in sports, Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGuire's cross sports showdown looks closer to being made after the two men talked up the prospect. Well, thank you, Jackson. Today in the Wall Street Journal, President. All right, welcome back. Now, at the end of that news segment, first of all, thank you, Nikki, for giving us that news. Uh, one of the pieces that I saw that I want to just touch on is well, Q with World Star who recently passed of uh, what they say was supposed to be a, a heart attack and obesity. One thing we try to talk about is a health tip every single show we have here. And I was just thinking, I, I know at least two people who passed in the past seven days based on heart complications. These were people young in their 30s and it was random. They were healthy, I'm talking about blood clog and just one day they're at work and the next day they're in the hospital like on life support and i just want to really encourage everybody like there's even a lot of our celebrities that are a lot of people just in general around the world black people especially that are dying of heart disease heart attacks um so that's something that we need to really be aware of is our heart health 
Uh, and I just want to, you know, I'm not a professional doctor, but we definitely want to be cognizant of that in terms of going to your professional health care provider, getting those checkups and doing whatever you need to do, like drinking that, that alkaline water that they yeah, put it have at, uh, what's that, Coca Culture Connection dot com? Culture Connection 360. Let's get you some. Right. Yeah. So where is it located? Okay. Sunny First and Stewart. They got good alkaline water over there, so they say. But I've tasted it. It's the best alkaline water <laughs> that I've ever tasted. Better than everywhere else. So make sure you get it. CC360. Yeah, it is the best. It's the best. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to kind of really get into the radical. This time, y'all know what time it is. It's time for the radical business brainstorm. Oh, Jay, you not excited about the radical business brainstorm? <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, so, so let's. So this is what we're going to do. So the winner of our our radical business brainstorm is Lana Glover with Tame. We have here, and so there's three main questions uh, that we asked you. One is, what is it that you're looking to do with your business? What roadblocks do you have? And also, uh, what have you done so far? So can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Um, well, I'm looking to develop a brick and mortar, um, um, you know, like residence for my business. I want to actually be able to provide services, you know, like salon services. I want to be able to sell my products. I want to be able to possibly do production in this area. Um, I find that the roadblocks have been possibly time, you know, making the proper time, being that I have a nine to five job. I do work in healthcare as a um, cardiac ultrasound tech, so I'm working 40 hours a week, plus trying to put all my free time into my business as an entrepreneur, you know, because my main focus is to not work in the healthcare field one day and to, you know, mainly just um, work as the CEO and founder of Tame Beauty. And um, so, so far I've done some different marketing things. Um, let me see. Um, uh, Make sure you're talking to the mic. Oh, okay. Um, so I've looked into different marketing avenues. I've gone um, to the bank and looked for, you know, different um, uh, locations, which to no avail so far. So basically, I just need, like, someone to, you know, take that time with me and, you know, make it happen to make the, the brick and mortar um, um, dream, you know, come to fruition. So you want the store, the brick and mortar to be called Tame? Yes. Okay, so in the brick and mortar, what are you going to have? You're just going to have all tame products, or um, um, can the other, you know, are there going to be other products in the store, or you know, it's going to be like, a, um, can they come in there and get their serv certain services done, like the, the hand, um, what did you call it earlier? Uh, uh, demonstration, the demonstrations, the uh, or body massages scrub. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be like a spa. Well, I think that that'll be like a progression uh, okay. as far as the spa, but they definitely can get the, you know, like the demonstration of the scrub and, you know, see how the products work and everything. So okay. as far as any services, that'll be like a progression, you know, that'll be like on a different level, you know, as the, you know. So how has it been going so far? Like what's, what's been the response from people who've tried your products? Uh, it's been a positive response everywhere. Like everybody who tries my products, <laughs> so like a positive response. Which one is your, I see you got four products up here. Mm -hmm. Which I'd one is the most popular? Uh, the most popular is my Shea Butter Whips. The Shea Whip, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the candles. People tend to love the candles. And the candles, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are your plans? Um, so, wh I mean, what ways have you marketed your product so far? Uh, so far, um, one way that I find that works for me is, like, getting out. You know, like, going out, you know, because actually the nephew of the owner of Dudley's I had the chance to hear him speak and he was saying that you know you can't get people to come to you you have to go to the people so I find that getting out there you know knocking on doors like right now I'm trying to get some wholesale orders from salons and different things like that from my natural hair products and okay you know the beard oils that I'm you know that I've developed and so far I'm having a good response how many products do you have in total I'll see if we got four here but how many do you have so far I have like maybe 16 16 mm -hmm. okay yeah, about. I have a question. Roughly. Um, what makes you think that having a physical space is the best approach moving forward? And I'm only asking that is because I know it is advan advanta <laughs> advantageous for a person to have a, a physical spot. 
but then that's also overhead that's yeah, the gonna overhead, be, boy. that's gonna be you know it's not necessarily the best thing in starting a business so i'm asking that because i don't necessarily know your business but i also know that it is the important part to me is to get out to the people so and getting out to the people they're not necessarily going to come to your space first you right. have to go and share it with them what it is definitely create the buzz and then enough times where they'll be like okay well, that's my in my neighborhood or you know you know how when people you go to some place it takes you three or four eight nine ten times before you actually physically go there yes and then even in the beginning of your business uh since it is sort of the beginning you yes. want to have more time to spend out uh, you know, doing things as opposed to actually having to physically be in your space. Okay. So can you, you know, talk about, think about that or, it, well, or is was, it a reason? Um, well, when I was thinking about it, it would give me a larger area to do my production because my business is growing. Even though it's still a small business, it's mm -hmm. gradually growing. And I'm finding that I'm, you know, I'm kind of cramped as far as my space to produce, you know, so that's why I can't achieve more. Um, orders and things like that right Got now it. because I don't have the space, you know, to produce this these products. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that that would allow me to. Um, people are intrigued about the candles and how I make them myself. So I would, you know, hold classes there, like candle making All classes. Right. Right. You know, it could be a space for that. You yeah. know, for people to interact. You know, different things. So like it's that. not just a brick and mortar store. Right. You're gonna have you know events or demonstrations and. Definitely. I guess a certain area you're going to have um, facilities to manufacture your product. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I got you. That, so that, that, it would work in many different facets, not yeah. just one. So it would drive the people there to also to purchase the product and to, you know, different interactions. Like I said, the candle making. How, how many sales are you getting? Are you getting any online sales? Are you trying to do online sales? Yes, I am trying to do online sales and I'm seeming to trickle in more of the online sales through my media marketing. You know, I found that social media is a great tool, you know, to trickle in more sales for my, uh, to trickle in more sales for my um, website. So that has been useful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause I'm curious, like I'm even when I'm looking at Tame, I'm just thinking about like even on Google, like just just searching it, and in terms of like the, with the Google search engines. Okay. Does this? Is there any other product similar? If I just if a person types in T A M E, like you know what I mean? Will you come up at the top of Google search engine? Um, to my knowledge, at this time, I don't think there's any anything similar with just that name. Yeah, like, while you're Tame. talking, I'm gonna look at it right okay. now. Why are you talking? Because that's important. I mean, most if if you're if you're if people are searching for even similar products, okay. right? Right. Uh, and you're you if you can show up at that first page of Google, that's you can be almost an instant millionaire, right? Just mm -hmm. because you know people are searching for shea butter and stuff, mm -hmm. and automatically you, every time you're showing up on, on that would Google. be amazing. You know what else would be amazing too is if 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 you had some kind of platform or some sort okay that you can actually be interviewed and shared of information and testimonies hmm. what could that be <laughs> oh you know what <laughs> fresh air network is a good platform <laughs> but no i'm no I'm, I'm being funny with a shameless plug but at the same time when you are a new person yes that's, that's, and, and the industry such as the beauty industry let's yes. just talk about that um you definitely have to take you know, separate yourself. Yes. And in the separating yourself, you want to build your audience organically. Yes. Okay, building your audience organically is like, like, who is this young lady? Where does she come from? They value that more, which gives them opportunity to see what your character is and your morale values and all that good stuff, mm -hmm. which I'm sure would be in your product. Mm -hmm. So they will buy things because they know you. And remember, I asked this earlier today about you being a chemistry chemist right. you have some chemist in yourself yeah. which we all do but the point being is that when you're introducing a product such as yours mm -hmm. uh, the value of having organic content to tell your story because you do have a nine to five that is, I think that's important so you should think about that okay. yeah I, I will I definitely got to say um, it's just amazing to see even the statistics of right now how so many people are buying over social media even more than they're buying on Google. Mm. You know, I mean, right, right now, one of the most underrated forms of advertisement that a lot of, my, that I'm seeing is Facebook. I know Justice talk about it all the time, the power of people just searching on the platforms where people are, where their attention is already there. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I just think, you know, I don't have you tried any Facebook ads at all or um, I have. I have been trying okay. the Facebook ads and it's sometimes it's a hit or miss. Well, you know, sometimes I'll get a large <coughs> reach, you know, maybe like a thousand, fifteen hundred people. Sometimes I might get ten. You know, so it's like a you know, like a hit or miss with the You have to be ads. careful with that because a lot of people they you know, they have business pages, they see that boost button, they click boost. But it's you know it's a whole other level behind that. Okay. You know so and a you know, the, the digital too. marketing, you know um so you know be careful because when I first started, you know I was just throwing money in different directions and what really wasn't focused. Mm -hmm. um, but um you know that is a, a certain skill set. Okay. You know and if you don't, <clears throat> you know just be careful just hitting the boost button and linking it to your PayPal card and wasting money because yeah. you want to make sure you target those audiences properly. Mm -hmm. And, and we were talking the other day, I guess we were preparing for the show. I think one of the things that I wish I would have done at the very beginning of w with my one of my businesses is before I even start really promoting and marketing, is really figuring out what's the identity of my brand and like what position, what is our perspective on this specific industry? You know, like where do we stand? So that way when people do hear, uh, or they do see our ad, they recognize it as a brand versus just a commodity, you know, so they don't just make one time purchase. They continue to want to purchase because right. they can identify with that brand. So I think that's really important because even with the name of like Tame, I just Googled it up. And it's funny. I'm seeing stuff like Tame Your Hair and Tame, you know, tame uh, Strip Club. Or <laughs> <laughs> tame that thing, you know, Tame that wow. thing. No, we just joking. Yeah. So. But but no, I I have you uh, been? I know we, we was talking about that though. You said you was gonna give that some more energy too on mm -hmm. really the identity and creating like, cause see here's the thing. Product product price. It's all about promotion and people. Those are the four P's of marketing. Okay. And I would probably even throw another one packaging. You know because sometimes you can have a good product, a good price, good promotion, and then packaging is jacked up. Or sometimes one of the, so all four of those things or five you know plus the fifth you got to have them all in order. You know, yeah. you got a good product. You, or well, sometimes people have a good product, but the price is too high. Mm. They price themselves out the game. You know, um, or they might be targeting a wrong audience. You know, and the marketplace um, tells you, you know, if your product. Because some people they 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 um, they'll price their product so high and say, well, because they have an emotional attachment to it, and say. Um, well, it's worth this because I believe it's worth this, and it's my personal product. So, you know, you got to kind of have the right price. You know, you already got a good product. You know, um, you, you seem to be kind of on the way to promoting it, you know, in a good way. You know, the, I see you changed up the label, so the packaging is good. You know, what's mm -hmm. been your response on labels? And, you know, good response. So, so, so far, far, I got a good response. Yeah. People so. like the new packaging. I you feel know. like it's a little bit more sophisticated, you know, a little okay. bit more streamlined, like I would want it to be. Like I pictured it, like, across the top of a building when I – did that okay mm -hmm. okay yeah Jack. i think another thing that's really important too and i don't i know it's not a p within marketing but it's consistency and that's what i know we're building a brand really it's something nowadays it's like you gotta almost be willing like like i said at the beginning of the show it's like it might even be a year before you even make real profit and that first year it's about just showing the mark showing the people that this is what we do because they might have to see it so many times to even believe, oh, yeah, okay, I got to see it eight times. Okay, that's what she do. I want to make profit from day one. <laughs> well, and... and, and <laughs> I remember someone told me, hey, when you in yeah. that business, it's going to take you two years to make profit. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not going to take me two years to make profit, mm -hmm. you know, so... And, and let's figure out how to make profit from the jump. Well, no, you, you know. do want to be liquid. I'm not saying, yeah. you know, don't be liquid because you have to be able to, to grow the business. But, but what I, I'm saying, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's too many people sometimes make the mistake of being sales and looking for a transaction versus being Building branding, looking for the relation, the long-term relationships, right. you know, and those long-term relationships really help you for the position. And they say a lot of times people, you know, they say you get rich overnight, mm -hmm. you know, all of the work is just getting put in position. But once you're in that position and you got them relationships, it's like, you know, that one key person overnight, right. it just explodes. Right. You know, so that, that that's all I'm saying is is consistency, like and specifically on social media. Consistency it, is key because mm -hmm. with a product like this, shea butter is so competitive. It is. It mm -hmm. is. You know what I mean? It's so many people. So like, what is separate? What makes your magic 
you know, you know what I mean, more magical than somebody else's. And many times it might be the relationship mm -hmm. that you have with your customers and how they perceive your brand. Okay. You know, or it might be how you deliver it to them. Mm -hmm. You know, your your delivery process. Mm -hmm. It might be a little bit, you know, you might have a, a, a good online mm -hmm. distribution that's different than everybody else. Okay. You know, but um, definitely you got to think about, like, so that's my question. What do you feel like separates you? from everyone else that sells similar products? Um, well, with my products, I can also create um, custom orders. You know, like if somebody was allergic to an ingredient in the shea butter, whip, I can eliminate that or, mm -hmm. you know, different, like, it could be a custom order. If they wanted a certain scent, you know, if they wanted certain uh, essential oils in there, you know, I would. Do you get a lot of requests for that? Not usually, no, I don't. Just very rarely. I have, but okay. that's one of the unique things in my company, I think. Yeah. So yeah. if someone was more interested in your products, you know, tame, you know, uh, how could they find it? You have a Facebook page or uh, social media, you know, any social media platforms? Uh, my social media uh, Facebook page is Tame Beauty Inc. Uh, Instagram is Tame Beauty Inc. And Snapchat is Tame Beauty Inc. That's good. You're consistent all across your platforms. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And now, one thing you said that what makes y'all custom is y'all can do a custom order. Yes. But is that on the packaging and the marketing? Like, how would a person know that? It is not. And I do have to update that information. And yes. So, yeah. And okay. actually, lately, I have gotten a few custom orders, you okay. know, for people who, you know, are not familiar with certain oils. Like, um, I had a guy who wasn't familiar with the coconut oil and how it would affect his skin. So, I did make him a custom and, and, shape. And, and here's what I'm getting to. I'm not even necessarily encouraging you to do custom orders. And, I, and I'm saying this because if we look at it on a mass scale, okay. if, you're doing, if you get to the point where you're doing like 500 units a week or whatever, you ain't going right. to be much room to do custom. So what I'm saying is on the branding side, on the wording side of it, you know, because some companies, what I would encourage, like what I did when I was working on a product, it's kind of similar to this. Mm -hmm. We went online. We looked to see who we Googled. What other? What's the top company selling something similar? And what are they price points? So what type of words and stuff are they using to market? Right. Because it might be a, a inter like a you know how some people they put the word organic or natural really big and automatically that what creates you know uh, that makes them stand the out from every other. Because if it's if you're planning on being in store, what do you want to be in stores? I think like Definitely. Walgreens and stuff. Definitely. What stores are you in? Uh, so far, I'm in Bonnie Sante, uh, located in Hyde Park. Bonnie Sante. Yes, and also CC360. Yeah. <laughs> Where is that? Located 400 uh, West 71st Street. Oh, Culture Connection. Oh, that's where I got the water from. That's right, the alkaline okay. water, the best. Yeah. Best yeah. in Chicago. And, well, yeah, we you know put the, some of our hats in that store. Hey, too. and okay. online, Tame, what's, the, what's, your, what's your website? Uh, my website online is tamebeauty.net. You can order products there. Okay. So... So just kind of recap, and I know we we just we threw a whole bunch of randomness at you really quick. <laughs> Radicals, right? Radical <laughs> stuff at you. Um, what's one thing though out of that that you feel like you can begin to implement over the next ninety days? Uh, I'm gonna say the consistency. You know, although it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Like I said, I work eight hour days. I come home and then yeah. I try to go right to work again. Gotcha. You know, because this is my passion. Like I can literally. <laughs> make these products in my sleep that's that's how that's how much i love you making got them team? you got a team you got somebody that's helping you uh my niece does help me from time to time okay. yeah but you all the products labor. she five years old you got her in there packing up you it sounded like, like that, that. Sounded, sounded like that <laughs> no she's actually she ain't uh, even old enough to be uh, touching it huh? she's actually a pretty good junior it's the entrepreneur. one that i met yes oh, okay uh -huh. yeah she like what 18 she in the yeah. kitchen she's whipping 19. up the whip huh? in the kitchen mm -hmm. whipping get to get that wrist game up so, yeah, I, I would um, probably Im implement that consistency. And now, now, do you have a lot of men that also purchase your products? Um, or is it majority women or both or equal? It's, it's kind of equal. Okay. Men and women purchase my products. So yes. for the guys, like, what's like their top product that, they're, that they normally uh, get from you? I would say the uh, Shea Butter. The Shea Butter? Yes. The Shea Whip? The mm -hmm. Whip Shea Butter? Okay. And they actually purchased the, the Comfy Melon. And the uh, the citrus meadow. Citrus meadow is the lemongrass scent. Okay, I like lemongrass, yeah. right? And you may mention that you have something for beards. Uh, beards I do. I have right. developed a beard oil, and I actually researched this oil for at least a year, and I attempted it several times, and it did not come out right. But I finally got the proper um, 
you know, formula. 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 Yes. Crime. You know, that works, you know, for the man's beard. And so far, I had a good response. And yeah. Now, you have 16 different products, right? Yes, roughly. And your, but your flagship product is the, the whipped shea butter? Yes, and okay. the candles. And the candles, because yeah. what I find a lot of entrepreneurs, when they jump in the game, they have all these products, but they don't keep up with the one that got them in the door. Yes. You know, so I think that's very important. So just keep the flagship coming. And then you probably might want to scale back, because 16 coming out the gate, that's a large... Uh, you know, that's a nice variety. That's a lot of extra okay. costs. You know, a lot of extra it. costs, yeah. bottles, okay. and time and energy. You know, so the one that's making you the most profit, that's the one you might want. The, you know, the, the top three, you might want to push those. Okay. You know, yeah. Even also, harder. If, also like advice. you said, if you if you want to take it on the road, if you have sixteen products to to have a healthy amount of all sixteen products, it's gonna you're gonna have to need a. a, a yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yeah. I really do. It's and, pretty. And, and that can help with your marketing campaign too. Like whatever <laughs> you're doing, let's say on Instagram. Because I, I, I personally think it might be a good. It might be an interesting Instagram play. You know, I'm thinking about what social. How can you play it on different platforms? I mean, like we were saying over the phone. I think it would be dope. Well, not necessarily. Well, this too. But we were talking about the beer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She has the go-to. What is it? It's the go-to beer, beer oil. oil. That enhances the man in every go-to situation. Yes. Right? Yes, definitely. And we were just talking about some ideas on how she can even be able to, like, take pictures of men in different situations and put that on Instagram consistently and use influencers. And that's a cool idea, too. That's what another thing that people try to do a lot as popular mm -hmm. is people marketing you to, uh, like, digital influencers. They want to find who's ever the YouTube star, the Instagram star, and then pay them to say use it. Yes. Now, I'm going to say this. If you were to go that route, because I personally like that route, but if you go that route, or anyone else is listening, you don't have to go for the person that has 100,000 followers. There's people on Instagram that maybe have anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 that, that might have a better relationship with their followers and might be more authentic with your brand. You know, and I would say go that route to get a true brand ambassador versus just paying some random person to give you a one-off quick transaction. Right. Because some people, they just be pushing, pushing, pushing so much stuff that they audience don't even respond to them because they always selling some tea or some little body shaper. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know. So, for example, you're saying like a YouTube representative, you know, maybe it's a guy, he... I don't know, he talks about different products, you know, for him to actually use the product and be an ambassador and talk about the product on his Definitely, channel, like, like for example, like so now now I, I don't know, but I'm assuming, I'm just being stereotypical, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume, I'm, I get in my mind, I got this picture of, you know, this uh, herbal tea princess, you know, who probably, she's a, a, a younger woman that's probably on YouTube, got a huge following, and all they do is review cosmetic products, and they like natural stuff. That's why I say herbal tea. Okay. Right? And so... Uh, maybe this, you know, she might be a, a younger girl or whatever. So it, she might have, I don't know, she might have 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So they work out packages all the time where you can, you know, you y'all do something, y'all work something out. Right. And build a relationship. And I would say it don't even have to be just straight up all complete compensation all the time. You know what I mean? Like you are going to. You compensate them but it doesn't have it could be like literally to me this is what people miss the boat on people miss the boat on the power of offering val like real value outside of money sometimes let me let me take a stab at that real quick if, if i could man um and i'm saying this in this manner because i'm hearing you I have an idea of um, what you've kind of gone through throughout the years, and I'm, of course, learning about Dr. Jackson, and then we have some people in here, uh, my mentee over there, and um, uh, editors. What I'm getting at is you have a job. Yes, I and do. And you may mention about the timetable that you want to actually put into this. I can't help but to bring up this podcasting concept again. <laughs> I think that sounds amazing. No, no, and no, I'm, I'm saying this because <laughs> I can't. I, I apologize, brother. Or can't. Like it, she's creating her own. It's project. hard to bring somebody like you into the station or the studio and talk about what it is that you're going through as an entrepreneur, 
as an entrepreneur in this particular profession. And then we talk about, okay, what's your challenges? What are some of the things that you have challenges with? And it all falls under getting and receiving good, valuable data. Now, the data could be somebody talking to you. The, the data can be somebody testimony because you talked to Felice today about the product. And, yes. and I was over here, you know, making ooh and ah noise because <laughs> y'all was like, ooh, okay, ooh. You know, but right. that, that in itself helps a person to draw their own conclusion just based off of seeing somebody else doing it. Mm -hmm. Why am I even bringing it up? Because it saves you time. It gives you constant uh, original content that you can utilize in a different facet and fashion in the future. And it's original. That means that you can actually, you're not telling the person to say ooh and ah. It's you sharing it with them in a natural response. People are going to see. And you know, people know when you're not authentic or not. But the point being is that as entrepreneurs, we have to take advantage and be efficient in the time and the energy and the content that we're building. So when the person does see it, whenever they see it, they can react based off of what you want them to react to, not what somebody else said. So y'all keep that in mind that uh, podcasting yeah. is pretty well, well, that That is super important uh, to be uh, have that authentic voice. Uh, but I, I, I guess I'm saying just from a standpoint of just in general, what I found on social media, like, man, you got to be consistent as hell with it. Like, for real. It's like almost like some of the big YouTubers, they YouTubing every day, sometimes twice a day to yes. build a following. Some of them, it might be four years. But here's the thing. Some of them that was starting YouTubing in 2012. In 2000, now today, some of them are making millions of dollars, mm -hmm. but they had to put in that grind where it was two, three years. Nobody was paying attention to them, okay. you know, and so, that, you know, that, that's my only thing. But I, he's absolutely right in terms of and even and, and here's the thing. It may be it may not be YouTube per se, you know, and I'm not talking about you, but I'm just talking about other people who have a similar position because everybody don't have the talent to be in front of the camera. You know, you would do very well, mm, okay, you. very well. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> some people, they might need to, you know what I mean, hire <laughs> hire a spokesperson. You know what I mean? No, that's Because they gonna look at their knuckles that's and say, real. "Come on, you, I'm finna buy from you." <laughs> you know what I mean? You got alligator knuckles? <laughs> Come on, you know what I mean? So <laughs> let's just, you know, I just want I want to put that out there. Well, I just have one thing to say. I did make a YouTube video um, just explaining how to use my face regimen. Mm -hmm. And so far, I have like 100 viewers on the YouTube. You got 100 subscribers? No, oh. I'm going to say I got six subscri subscribers. Okay. So you got a you channel, got Tame, Tame what? Tame Beauty Inc. On, on YouTube, YouTube. Uh, yes. So subscri YouTube. Subscribe to that. So if y'all watching gotta, this, make sure y'all go watch. The but so you got? Are you doing like tutorials or demonstrations on your YouTube channel? Yes, I will be doing tutorials and demonstrations on the YouTube channel. And then you share that to other social media platforms. You know, that's how you build a following up to feed them back into your channel. Okay. And, and back you to know. Dr. Jackson is a consistency. If I heard you correctly, you said you did one. Yes. How long ago was that one? Exactly. That one was six months ago. That was, oh, okay. Yes. You know, it's funny. I, I want to throw this in there. I, had, I did a video about three years ago. It was one of my first YouTube videos. 40,000 views, right? Okay. Maybe a week or two later, I did another video. It was about another 40,000 views. So I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, I'm hot, right? I'm that dude. You know, he's loving me, right? <laughs> I waited about six months. I went back, made a video. We talking about 20 views. Mm. Like, literally, when you take time off, it's almost like they didn't forgot about you. And now they got it where you got to click on, they got to click on notifications to even hear about, like, to even know. So, right now, you might have, let's say, a lot of subscribers, but if they don't click on notifications, they're not even going to know you posting videos right. unless they looking for them. But, you know what, um, we gave you some tips, but your main focus right. is your product. Product. Merch. So sometimes you got a lot of entrepreneurs, they think they need to start becoming a, 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 um, an advertiser or a marketer. Right. They so they start wasting a lot of time. You know, yeah. or they, they need, you know, um, or, they, or they, they don't know, they confuse it. Like you got a product that you're manufacturing. Do you want to be a wholesaler or you want to be a retailer? You know, because sometimes I, I see entrepreneurs like uh, they may make a product, but then they want to compete with the people that they're uh, wholesaling, wholesaling the product to. Yeah. So it's like okay, you know, you know, pick a, So sometimes you got to pick a lane and be focused, 
um, on exactly, you know, the best way to do it, you know. Um, so if, mm -hmm. if you think that social media or whatever isn't your cup of tea, you know, you still can do it. Mm -hmm. But you might want to hire someone who's, uh, you know, maybe a consultant, you know, to help you uh, push your product even further so you can focus on the quality of your product. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we know. have any social media consultants that's watching this right now, make sure you put mention that in the comment box. Mention that whatever you do. In fact, we want to know what everybody's doing. Questions. Call us at 773-263-2584. Chester, that was a good point, man. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's an old saying that I've learned. It says, um, do you rather work on your business or in your business? And the difference between the two is the example that I was talking about, the mom, Paul versus Walmart. It is what he's saying to you is that you don't have to, you have to accept the managerial part of your business. Right. And sometimes the managerial part means that you're not the right person to do this. Understanding that you're not the right person to do this, whether it's because you don't have the expertise, the time, energy, or what have you, but it also tells you that if you want to move something forward, the faster you act, you know, make, make a decision that you're not the person to do this, then it gives you an opportunity to be like, okay, who's that person that can do this? Mm -hmm. Why am I getting that person? And then that is, the, I think, the pinnacle of how entrepreneurship and us recycling our dollars will come from, is knowing that don't be a penny pincher, but you are being a penny pincher and you're not necessarily... Um, advancing in your mm -hmm. business because you do you need to go to the person that is an expert in it and if you go to the person that's an expert in it maybe they may help you to become more of a, a walmart scenario as opposed to a mom paul this that you know the mom paul is the ones who's mm -hmm. in there every day you know stacking the groceries yeah self you know. self-awareness is big no, so no, so no yeah keep that in mind that was a good uh, point okay. self-awareness you know, Definitely in the right place to be headed in that direction, you know. Here today on the CC 360 Connect. You should, you should, uh, you might want to entertain, you know, do the things that's going to push the product forward and, you know, make the money or the profit. So, like you say, you have, who do you have? You have one of your relatives helping you make the product? Right. So, but, so she already knows the formula and how, so. Yes. Let her do that. Okay. You, you know, um, whip it, but whip you, <laughs> you also. Have you talked to store owners or, or distributors, you know, in regards to, now, if that's what's making you the money, that, that's where, you, you know, the, 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 your time is more valuable. Activities, baby. Right. You might want to, if, you know, if that's, you know, getting your product to a wider audience, you might need to talk to more uh, distributors or store owners to get, you know, because that may be your skill set, and they're going to respond to that. Mm -hmm. You know, so while you're in the kitchen whipping up stuff, let your niece do that, okay. you know. Um, if you don't really want to focus on making videos, you can maybe have someone do that. But you, you know, your value is talking to people to get your product in their stores, or you know, um, you know, in the proper distribution channels. That's what I've been doing lately. So so far, I'm talking to a, um, a barber shop okay. to get my beard oils in the shop, and you know, to uh, distribute them to the different barbers so that they can use them on the client. I saw you. I saw you doing over in Bonnie Sante a couple of times yes. doing demonstrations. Yes. And you have your product over there. Mm -hmm. I saw yes. your culture connection a few times. Mm -hmm. You yes. got so, your product in there. Mm -hmm. You know. So. So speaking, I want uh, speaking of that. I want to sh shift gears just a little bit. For those who are who want to get more information like this, you want to build your business. Uh, you want to get that ninety day game plan going. You can go to the Business Boot Camp three sixty dot us. Where you can go and get, co we have courses that are available to help you grow your business, uh, whether if it's a new or you've been in business for a year. So, Business Bootcamp 360.us. Before we conclude, because we only got less than 10 minutes left, we have a lot going on on the political scene. How do y'all feel like uh, the political scene impacts business? Will it impact business? Uh, how do you feel like it might impact your business? What to entrepreneurs or even professionals that want to be entrepreneurs might be thinking? Well, you know, we got uh, Trump in office, so, you know, after he gets done, and you know, we're, we're all going to, you know, you're going to have to uh, take a moment to escape. <laughs> So, you know, she, she so already I expect some orders at TameBeauty.net. At TameBeauty.net. So, you know, after he get done working your nerves and, you know, putting the, applying the pressure, you know, you're going to need these, these products right here. So your question was how does politics mm -hmm. affect business? Mm -hmm. 
you know. So, yeah. you know, um, at this time, if I was probably going to set up something, something else, it might be, you know, uh, in areas of, uh, I guess, recreation, you know, or, mm -hmm. um, or you know, um, mindset, you know, because you're going to have to have a positive mindset, you know. Yeah, you and, know, that, go ahead. and speaking of that, that's really important. A lot of people sometimes get scared in these times and they don't want to move forward with their goals. And I'm going to tell you, the most money is made during troubled times when people are afraid. If it's you position chaos. yourself right. right. You, season you opportunity. That season is opportunity. So capitalize. You can make money based on people feeling pain by you providing a remedy and pain relief. Right. And, and you can do that, whatever your business, because that's what most businesses are, is some form of solution. So this is a prime opportunity to do it. And uh, I know in the black community, especially they say some of the businesses boomed during the Great Depression in the 19, you know, early 1930s. So, well, I think sometimes it when you have episodes like we're having right now, it makes people start thinking about things that they never thought about before. I think that's the underlining thing, whether you're in business and you've been in business for, for 17 years. And when episodes like this happen, you automatically, in most cases, think of like, oh, let me do something different or let me think differently. And, mm -hmm. it, and that, that's not a bad thing. We sometimes don't move unless, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's an issue that makes us move. So my thoughts when it comes to politics is... I really don't want us to be focused on the everyday things that's going on because it will uh, scare you. It will keep you from moving forward. If you, I mean, you know how much data is coming out now and videos and, and, and let's think about it. We never had as much <coughs> politics on our social media on Facebook as we've had right now. Now, that means that somebody is, is actually uh, capitalizing off this moment, too, based off of the times. So we have to stop being paralyzed by what's going on politically-wise. We have to, you know, of course, have our, our, um, have our antennas up to be yeah. able to, to not be um, distracted but be just informed, I guess I'm saying. That's yep. good advice. So as, as we begin to conclude, do y'all have any announcements, y'all, any events coming up y'all want to uh, let people know that everybody should needs to know about? Any, any, anything going on, Tang, that you know uh, about? Any demonstrations that you have or events uh, that you're going to be at? Uh, not at this time, but um, from time to time I am doing demonstrations at Bonnie Sante, and also I will be doing demonstrations at Culture Connection. Um, you can catch me there actually this Saturday coming up. So, what's going on there this Saturday? Uh, I'll be doing demonstrations at okay, Culture Connection. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So you can catch me there um, doing demonstrations, the scrub demonstrations. Um, it'll be in the morning, eleven o'clock. What is Culture Connection? If you can you explain that? Uh, so that Cultural Connection, from what I understand, it's a cultural oasis. Okay. In the Inglewood community or Greater Grand Cross, in, um, technically, in Chicago. So, you know, um, cultural products, artwork, T-shirts, uh, copper and crystal jewelry, um, alkaline water, uh, you know, carry, um, carry products like that. Um, and it's pretty much com comprised of uh, multiple, along, you know, with the stores products, it has multiple um, uh, vendors and entrepreneurs who make products such as, uh, such as Lana that have their products in the store. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you want to, you know, support um, independent people like, or entrepreneurs like Alana, you know, stop by a store like Culture Connection, and you'll find there's maybe 20 to 25 different um, uh, products by, you know, various, you know, companies and individuals. That's the first time I've ever heard the words Inglewood and Oasis in and the Oasis same sentence in, in my life. <laughs> you know, so, hey, come check it out. So, so listen, it's going down on February, is it 18th? You can find that hat. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they had these up there, definitely. All right. Hey, what day so, I, I help do marketing and promotion for Coach Connection, so make sure you stop by and check them out. Uh, we got the Gentrified Screening in Chicago. That's going to be February 8th. That's 18th, February 8th. That's Saturday. It's one of the most important films probably of the whole year. You know, you've seen... 
Moonlight, you've seen this film, you've seen that film, and Hidden Figures, and this, that, and other. You need to see Gentrified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's because gonna, you know you probably saw the billboard. I think they put a billboard up on um, what sixty right off the Dan Ryan Expressway. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen it yet, but um, you know it's a good film. And if you've seen the film like Seven A.M. or even the Hidden Colors series or Urban Kryptonite or something like that, it's in the same vein. So it's going to be February 18th over at the Harold Washington Cultural Center. And you can get your tickets at cultureconnection360.com. Um, also, um, you know, if you just want to come outside, um, check out the 300 group. They do something every Thursday at Reds with DJ Jeff the Illis. Every Thursday at Reds, 7 to 1. Yeah, and I think it's extremely important that you are outside around uh, positive, like-minded people doing something that you can build with. They got some common uh, sense. Like with some common sense, right. yeah. Because uh, And you're going to find a lot of that at the Gentrified screening um, because we're even going to be having some of our uh, ex-students from the business boot camps going to be there. There's going to be a talk back um, a and panel. discussion, panel discussion after the film, you know, to... You know, to see what's going on in our environment and to, you know, come up with solutions where we can put ourselves in a position to, uh, you know, get ourselves in a better place. And for everybody who's watching, we want y'all to uh, make sure that y'all leave comments. If you want to be on the show next week or the next upcoming weeks, you want to start hitting us on Fresh Air Network. Inbox that page or you can inbox me directly uh, with your information. Uh, also, next week is going down. We are going to officially start the Kickstarter or the fundraising campaign for the Nation of Hustlers documentary. That's going to start officially next week, and this is what we. This is what this is a. This is what we need. What's the real name of the documentary? Are we going to stick with that? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's not Nation of Hustlers. You know, it's Nation of Hustlers is the brand, but it's how to win like an immigrant. How to Win Like an Immigrant is the title of it. How and to Win Like an Immigrant. Right. And so the, the, the documentary is going to be going into detail with different cultures and their hustle codes, their whole codes of conduct on how they view hard work and build their communities through using hard work. Because when you walk out of your door, who do you see owning all the stores, the gas stations, the, you know, the hair supply stores? Is it us or is it someone else? So. I think that's a good title, uh, Jackson. You know, so don't be, you know, don't, don't, don't get scared now. So, set up, set up the last video. oh yeah. Uh, okay. So just make sure if y'all want to get on shows like this, tune in to the Fresh Air Network. Fresh Air Network. I say that again. And like we said, because there's so much negative stuff going on, you want to stay positive. So we about to conclude this, and y'all about to see a video. That's. By, yes, you already know Dr. Jackson, all about making things happen, <laughs> addicted to action. And this is a short video. This is what this is what you call this is more powerful than hypnosis. This is success. What we got here now. Daily doses. Have I seen okay. this before? I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know. I mean, if you feel it more successful today, you probably did. And <laughs> what Jackson don't even know why. Okay, what is so this Action is Jackson to cooking? Tune in, subscribe to the YouTube page, and we'll be seeing y'all next week. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. I want to Don't forget to check out my uh, Facebook page, Tame Beauty Inc. Also, check out my Instagram, Tame Beauty Inc. And also, check out my Snapchat, Tame Beauty Inc. Also, um, subscribe to my YouTube page, Tame Beauty Inc. Thank you. Makes you seek pleasure that keeps you unproductive. Yeah, look, look at it, look at, look at it, brothers. These ideas are now being programmed in your mind, and they empower you every time you hear the word power. In this moment, you realize that you are whole, healthy, wealthy, and strong. that you heard about, read about, or seen in real life, you know you are as great as any one of them possibly greater. And God is the greatest. Thank you, God, for being in me, through me, and all around me. You realize in this the moment, value of your time, and you focus your attention on things that get you closer to where you wish to be. You realize to take control of your life and your destiny requires responsibility. 
You now choose to accept responsibility for your life. You pledge to give your time, talent, energy, and money to accomplish these great tasks. These words empower you every time you hear the word power. Each one of you is in pain. We're in pain, brothers. We live with constant pain. You choose to improve yourself by focusing on things that are positive and productive. You recognize that you are powerful. You are whole, healthy, strong, and wealthy. Powerful people make decisions. And in this moment, you make the decision to break down your plans into detailed steps and take action. You choose to improve yourself physically, mentally, socially, mentally, emotionally, for the benefit of your family. All of these ideas are programmed in your mind and they empower you every time you hear the word power. Power.